Tragedy was unleashed on Joseph Andrews Drive in San Ignacio on early Sunday morning, just after 12.30. The spray of bullets caught five people. Two are dead. Wendell Trapp and Samuel Hill. Two are in stable condition, Danny Jimenez and Talisha McKay. And the fifth victim, Marquise Robatou, is in a serious but stable condition. This tragic shooting has left the San Ignacio, Santa Elena, and Esperanza communities in shock, as many residents were out for a night on the town when they witnessed the murders just outside of CK Sports Bar. This red Toyota Camry was parked across the street. It's a taxi that belonged to Samuel Hill. He was operating his taxi that morning when the killers arrived, one or perhaps two of them fired many shots towards the taxi and then reportedly got away in a vehicle. The bullets were meant for 29-year-old Wendell Trapp. He's a football player and father of two. Trapp has had multiple run-ins with the law, but it was a feud brewing with some other young men that claimed his life. He was shot dead. One of the bullets caught him in his head. There is no mistaking that he was the intended target. The other four were innocently caught. Accordingly, he get three shots. Wow. Uh -huh, but they say he get one in his head and one to his heart. Now, Aunt, what do you make of that shooting that happened out there? Why was Wendell targeted? Well, um, I won't say my nephew was a saint, right? Because he has a lot of faults too. But he's, he was a target for certain people. My nephew was a target that night and they get him that night. Did they make previous attempts on his life? Before, yes, they did, but they never catch him like really this time here. Yeah. They catch him off guard this time. So when he was out there, nobody, from what you've heard from people out there, they didn't notice any like funny movements, anything, something planned? Well, apparently he know that people was around, right? But he didn't make it an issue or, or for make no scene or nothing, right? Because from in the day, we had a marathon here in Esperanza and there was a certain amount of guys out there already targeting him. And I guess they follow him that night in the taxi and that, that was what unfolded afterwards. And so the others out there were just sort of collateral damage then? Y yes, I guess they were in the taxi along with him, you know, so they get targeted too, but they were not the target. My nephew was. Trapp's aunt says that they've received reports that he was inside the bar before the incident happened, but when he wanted to re-enter, he wasn't allowed. She suspects that he may have been set up. She says he didn't deserve that brutal end. He got a call and went outside. And when he wanted to go back inside, a young lady that worked in the nightclub called the security and told him to not let him outside. And then she called a certain person outside and tell him that he is still out there. But do you know, so you feel that it, it was a setup, like the, that person was communicating with his killer, killer? Yes, exactly. If he did wrong to others out there, let they find him guilty and make him pay for his crime. He never deserved to die like this. And yet we knowing what the cause of it, but yet we have no one to turn to for help. You know, we are fighting, we are fighting the justice system and we are mourning at the same time. What was the nature of his problem with those boys? Well, I have no idea because apparently he and the guys, they were friends before. But what caused the feud, I have no idea. I have no idea, but all I know is because of my nephews, we also as the family members are targeted also. Do you expect or are you guys maybe thinking that there may be further bloodshed as a result of what has happened? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm scared, but I can't live my life hiding. So whatever happens after this happens. The killer's bullets also fatally caught 22-year-old Samuel Hill of Esperanza Village. Hill was working when he too was shot dead on the scene when a bullet caught him in the throat. Pastor Matthias Hill saw his son about three on Saturday afternoon. The next time he saw him was early Sunday morning. By that time, he was dead. I spoke to him. He came in here um, about after three in the afternoon. I spoke with him briefly. And then he left and I said, okay, son, I will see you later. I never did get to see him again alive. Did he share with you maybe what he was going out to do? Well, he was a taxi driver by trade, or by profession, if you will. And that is what he was doing at that time. 
that this, uh, as you said, this unfortunate incident um, happened. I mean, Samath, how do you reconcile with something like this? Your son was out there, you know, earning an honest dollar and he became the casualty of a feud that he had no part of. Well, looking at life, life has its own challenges and risks as such. Yes, he was doing an honest job. And like I mentioned, is that it could have happened to any person. It, was, it just happened that he was there at that time. Samuel Hill is described as an easygoing, well-known and an ambitious young man who only a week ago got his own taxi operation going to work for himself. He said he was my baby boy. Very jovial, very mannerly. Um, we had a good relationship, a father-son relationship. Um, he wasn't a, we would say, an upstart young man, you know. Um, he was just a kind, nice person. How long has he been running his taxi? Um, he has been running a taxi uh, a little while for a wonderful church brethren. And then um, one of his cousins eventually helped him out getting a car for himself to do his own, um, to make something of himself. And uh, it was just like a week that had gone by after he got his license and everything that this incident happened. The third victim is 19-year-old Marquise Robertou. He's also a member of the Belize Coast Guard and a resident of Esperanza Village. He's the cousin of Samuel Hill. Marquise would usually tag along with Hill, and that is what he was doing when three bullets hit him. He underwent surgery early this morning and is now in the hospital recovering. They took out the bullet that he was bleeding inside. And he's on his way to recover right now, but we're just um, praying and hope for the best for him because the bullet that he received large beside his heart and he get a bullet on his right hand shoulder and on his left foot. He said he was just heard a gunshot and he ran for his life. Tried to get away from the scene. Well, he run, run towards the market, and he approached two police officer, and he told them that she just got shot. The fourth victim is 30-year-old Bandits football club player Danny Jimenez. He's also a cop attached to the special patrol unit. Jimenez was standing on the side of the street, not associating with the other victims. When he was shot in the face, the bullet caught him in his mouth and has caused massive damage to his jaw. He has been released from the hospital and now needs reconstructive surgery. The fifth victim is 29-year-old Talisha McKay. She's a resident of Esperanza Village. She was shot in the shoulder and remains hospitalized in a stable condition. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.